it's always maximize exposure to sunlight in the first half of the day. Number one thing for just making sure that you sleep well that night. And then mm. limiting artificial light exposure by dimming lights from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. Very few people do those two things, but they have an outsized effect on sleep. And there's a really nice study out of Israel this last year that showed that if you had people, this was men and women, go outside for 20 minutes three times a week and try and expose as much of their skin as they possibly could to sunlight while still being decent, all right? that it raised testosterone and estrogen significantly. Why? Because skin isn't just an organ to you know tattoo and protect our organs. It's a organ that actually functions as an endocrine, as a hormone organ, that, like vitamin D, right? Mm -hmm. This kind of thing. And there was this whole pathway that they delineated in this study, really interesting, based on keratinocytes, which are these particular skin cells, and P53, which is a cell cycle molecule. Super interesting, it showed getting sunlight on your body, getting sunlight exposure to your eyes early in the day, increases testosterone and estrogen, increases feelings of well-being, improves sleep, et cetera. It's like all the things we know, right. but people are, th are finally catching on to this. And they, even though I kind of blab about this ad nauseum on my podcast, people always say, well, can't I just crank up my phone really bright in the morning and sit there? There's always this kind of negotiating. <laughs> like you're, you're not going to out negotiate the sun. Right. right. I mean, and then people think, oh, well, the sun, that's really kind of woo technology. No, we evolved to get sunlight during the day and to avoid light at night. Have they done studies on people that live in, like, say, the Pacific Northwest where they don't get a lot of sunlight and whether or not that affects their testosterone and estrogen? Yeah. So they definitely, it depends on where they start out because there's some genetic variation. I mean, the variation in testosterone levels is huge, hence the huge reference range of like 300 nanograms per deciliter all the way up to, you know, 1,200, right? Mm -hmm. This is what makes TRT kind of a, a, a tricky topic. But more seasonal depression for sure, greater requirement for sunlight viewing but the, uh, in order to keep mood high and hormone levels high. But the good news is people that are very susceptible mood-wise and hormone-wise to lack of sunlight respond best when they start getting light. Mm. So there's this really nice study that looks at like night owls and people that don't get much sunlight during the day. If they start doing, getting some caffeine, exercise and sunlight in the early part of the day. Caffeine. And, mm -hmm, just to ramp up their energy levels early on, get them outside, but also eating in the earlier part of the day. You know, just trying to bring their active schedule into the earlier part of the day. But doesn't caffeine just make you feel like you're not tired? Ah, so this is a really cool mechanism. There's actually a trick to avoid the daytime, uh, the afternoon crash. It's not a trick, it's biology. But caffeine is an adenosine antagonist. It basically, as the longer you're awake, adenosine, or Matt Walker would say adenosine, aden adenosine builds up in your bloodstream. It's what makes you feel fatigued. Caffeine essentially blocks the adenosine receptor, but then when caffeine wears off, the adenosine that's still around binds to that receptor and you crash, you feel really sleepy. Mm. So one thing that you can do is when you wake up in the morning, don't ingest caffeine for the first 90 minutes or so, like really push that off so that the adenosine and adenosine receptor interactions can all take place and dissipate. Then you drink caffeine and what you'll find is that if normally you would crash around two or three in the afternoon, you don't experience that crash anymore. Mm. because the caffeine wears off, but there isn't a lot of adenosine there to bind the receptor. The crash that I experienced from caffeine is n lack of caffeine or caffeine and then getting off it is nothing compared to the carb crash. Oh, Carb crash for me, like if I have a sandwich, like if I go to like a uh, fucking Jimmy John's or something and have a big giant sandwich. How often does that happen? Very rarely. But when I do, I'm like, what's wrong with you? They used to play at a place called uh, Cavaretta's in uh, the valley that I used to go to, and they would have these meatball subs. They were fucking sensational. And sausage and pepper subs is like an old-time Italian deli. And uh, every time I would eat one, I would just go into a coma. But you are mostly low-carb meat. Uh, yes. I, I actually talked to uh, Paul Saladino. Uh,